So this question says a 25 Newton crate is held at rest on a frictionless incline by a force that is parallel to the incline. Okay, a lot of weird words in there. But it says also that the incline is at 25 degrees above horizontal. What's the magnitude of the applied force? All right, so when I'm looking at this, it says I have an incline. It's at 25 degrees. I have a block that has a weight force of 25 newtons. This is a little bit of a weird thing. They give us in terms of newtons. So I'm looking at my units thinking 25 newtons, newtons is a force. So that means they're giving me my weight force has a value of 25 newtons. And I'm holding it on there by a force parallel to the incline. So the force is either up or down the ramp. Well, if I put this block on the ramp, it's going to slide down the ramp. So in order for me to, to keep it from going down the ramp, I have to put an upward force up the ramp. So that's going to be my applied force. So let's draw our free body diagram. Well, I have a weight force. It points straight down. Gravity pulls this thing towards itself. Pour, pulls the block towards the center of the earth. Straight down. I know I have an applied force. And last but not least, I know that I have this surface right here, which means perpendicular to that surface, I'm going to get a normal force. So now I'm going to draw a coordinate system. I'm going to draw a coordinate system that has positive x up the ramp and positive y perpendicular to the ramp. If you haven't seen these problems before where you have ramp problems, a lot of times a good choice of coordinate systems is up the ramp is being one direction off the ramp, perpendicular to the ramp, the other one will be a, uh, a good um, perpendicular coordinate to that first one. So, Newton's second law says that the net force gives me an acceleration. I know in this case my acceleration is zero because it's being held at rest. So I'm reading some other words into this problem, and I'm going to see if I can't solve this problem um, using this. So now, in the x direction, I have to go through and figure out what my values are in my x direction. Well, in my x direction, it says, add up all my forces in the x direction, and it has to give me zero, right? My total acceleration is zero, so each component of acceleration, my x component of acceleration has to be zero. So as I go around, I'm going to start over here in the positive x direction and add up all my forces that are in the x direction. Well, first thing I come across is positive f, right? It's in the positive x direction. It's solely in the x direction because it's solely up the ramp because that's what it says, parallel to the incline. My normal force is perpendicular to the incline. It's only in the y direction, so no normal force. And last but not least, down the ramp, right? There's a component down the ramp of the weight force. So I'm going to say this is the weight force in the x direction. And that's going to give me zero. All right, it would be really nice if I know what this weight force is. Because if I know what that weight force is, if I have everything that goes in here, then I can use this equation to solve for my applied force. So I'm going to draw this little triangle right here. This, this guy right there. I'm going to redraw it a little bit bigger. I'm going to actually try to draw this straight. I have a downward force, a downward weight force. I need the weight force in the x direction and the weight force in the y direction. This is my weight force. So I really need to know what angle. They gave me 25 degrees. I know that if I were to extend this triangle out, that this is perpendicular, this is 25 degrees. That means this is 90 minus 25, because it has to add up to 180 degrees, which means that this angle right there has to be theta as well. So I get plus F over here again, minus my weight force times the sine, because I'm looking for the opposite. This guy right here 
is the opposite of it. So I need the sine of theta is equal to zero. So even though I'm in the x coordinates, I get a sine function because the angle I was given was not the angle that I wanted. Sine of, or if I wanted to use cosine, I would have needed to use this angle. Could have. That would have just been, you know, 90 minus 25. That would have been fine, and we would have used a different angle. We wouldn't use theta, we'd use some other angle, maybe angle phi. But I'm going to use sine of theta because I like using theta, and it's just easier for me to switch my trig function. So that means my weight force, mg times sine of theta, is going to be equal to my applied force. Don't even have to deal with the y direction. I do need to substitute in what these values are. Well, my weight force is mg. It's just 25 and the sine of 25 degrees. I know that sine of 25 degrees, it's almost sine of 30 degrees, and the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. So I'm going to say that this is a little bit smaller than 25 over 2. So I'm looking for something that's a little bit smaller than 12 and a half. I'm seeing that I got a nice little value right here of 11. So I'm going to say that this answer is 11 newtons. So sine of tw or 25 newtons times the sine of 25 degrees will give me 11 newtons. So I used a shifted coordinate system. I did up the ramp and perpendicular to the ramp as my x and my y. I added all my forces, and I was being very careful of the angles that they gave me because, well, I never trust the angle that they give me is the one that I want to use, so I always have to check it. But it's a pretty straightforward ramp problem, and it says that we need 11 newtons to hold a 25 newton block from sliding down a 25 degree ramp.